This is part three of our negotiation book, Preparing Strategies, and we're going to be looking at the vocabulary here. So let's jump right into the vocabulary, and we start out with our first word, which is acceptable. Acceptable meaning that the offer is good enough, that it meets your requirements, it's okay. Usually we use this in our negotiation by just saying, your price is acceptable. And the great thing about this word is it doesn't make it sound like you're super happy. So it helps you to keep your secret information secret because you don't say, oh, this price is wonderful. You just say acceptable. You can say it with a very straight poker face. And you don't let any clues out. Because remember, you want to keep your secret information secret. So acceptable is a great word. Of course, the opposite is unacceptable, same thing. You don't say it's too high or too low or how far, you just say we can't do it. Is it a big miss or a small miss? It's unknown. So acceptable, a great word to use in your negotiation. Accommodate. Now accommodate means to give something up or to give into or to allow the other side to get something they want. Now usually we would use this to ask the other side to please accommodate. Or we can ask them to accommodate for something we need. So for example, we could say something like, could you please accommodate our shipping requirements? We must have the shipment ready before January. So accommodate us, help us somehow like this. Now it doesn't mean that you give me something and I give you something in return, although that could be the case. It just means that you are asking to get something or you're saying, yes, I can accommodate you on that. That means we can let you have that. Usually it would mean that we're going to give you something kind of out of a feeling of cooperation or goodwill. So it's not always, I would say usually it's not a, 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 an exchange of something to give something back. Alternative. So the alternative is if you can have A, but you could also have B, then you can choose this B as an alternative. So the alternative is great in your negotiation because you can actually tell the other side, I do not have to buy from you, I have another alternative. So I can go to another seller and buy from them, that's my alternative. At the same time, you could say something just the opposite and say, you don't have any alternatives. So if I'm a buyer and you're a seller and there's no other buyers, I could tell you, I need your price to be lower because there's no other buyers. You have no other alternative. So very often to be used in a negotiation, no problem. Avoid, avoid meaning to stay away from something or not do something because it's dangerous or it's something that's not good. Now in in negotiation, of course, how do we use the word avoid? Usually you would not use this in your negotiation, but rather you would use this in your team to, with your team to talk about your strategy or your tactics. And avoid here meaning, I want to avoid negotiating with another group. And maybe it's a specific group that never gives you a good deal, or maybe your company just has a really bad position. Your price is not good, your price is too high as a seller. Uh, maybe your quality is too low, your shipping is too long, and there's really nothing you can get no matter what, and you may want to avoid negotiation. Or the opposite could be true too. You could have a great position and you don't want to hurt your position, so you avoid negotiation. So avoid. Behavior. Of course, behavior is the way people act, the way they speak, and what they do. So behavior is not a word we use in our negotiation, but rather it's something we look at. We look at the other side's behavior. It's very important to try to understand the other side. This is really key because that secret information. Remember, you must keep your information secret, but how do you win a negotiation? By finding out as much as you can about the other side's secrets. And how do you do that? You have to watch their behavior. By watching their behavior, you can see how they react. Very important. Collaborate. So collaborate means to work together. In a way, it's like cooperate, but it's not exactly the same, right? Cooperate infers that you work together uh, happily, that you really try to 
uh, integrate, whereas collaborate means that you basically are doing something together but maybe not so integrated. So collaboration meaning maybe I do something and you do something and together we can succeed or we can get to the goal of this negotiation. So collaborate can work in many ways in a negotiation of course. For example, there's nothing that says that you have to work alone. Your group in our RPG negotiation can work with other groups. Um, that could be collaboration. In other words, you are a buyer and there's other buyers. You may work with those other buyers in order to help your situation get a good out, uh, outcome or you may sacrifice something to help them get a good outcome. And they could be buyers or sellers on either side. So you work with other groups, but you're not negotiating with them directly. Rather, you're collaborating to get something positive. Now, maybe you get something positive now, or maybe you sacrifice something and get something positive later. Kind of opposite of that is compete. So compete meaning that you're working against another team to win. You're working against another company to win. You want to beat them. And this compete, of course, is the core of the negotiation. You're going to be competing. Now you're competing, of course, against your um, other team that you're negotiating with. But more importantly, you're competing against all the other companies in the marketplace. And in our case, it's not a real marketplace, it's a make-believe mar marketplace, an RPG marketplace, but you're still competing. I think you get, need to remember this word, compete. Now, you don't use this word in your negotiation. You never say something like, uh, we are competing with you. That's a little bit too harsh. Rather, you're always saying things like, I would love to collaborate with you. We want to cooperate with you. But back in your team, when you're making your planning, when you're talking with your team members, remember, competition that compete idea. You need to compete. You need to get out there and compete in order to win. Demand. Of course, demand is something we often talk about. Demand and supply, right? Supply and demand, your economics class. In this case, what we're talking about is a demand. I demand something. I want something. Or I need something. And demand is a very strong word. So you would use this inside your negotiation very normally but not too often. You cannot say everything is a demand. I demand a low price, and I demand a fast shipment, and I demand high quality. Well, if you say this word too many times, people stop believing you that it's really a demand. So a demand would be maybe one or two things, usually one, that is really important. And so you demand that. And it's a very strong word, and you can say it. We demand it. But you have to be careful because it could cause the other side to walk away. If you demand it and the other side is not going to give in to you, they're not going to give up or compromise on that, then they could just say, we're going to just not negotiate, we're going to withdraw. Expensive. Of course, we use this word, oops, I missed one, emphasis. There we go, emphasize, emphasize. So emphasize is a, is a word that you can use in your negotiation, it's very helpful. You can say, I emphasize. Now, this is really great that this word is right next to demand because, in a way, they're similar. Uh, emphasize here is the verb. Uh, you're going to put emphasis on something. You're going to stress that it's very important. So you make a plan and then you emphasize what's most important to you. It may be the price is most important. Maybe the delivery. Maybe the relationship is something you emphasize. You can also use this in your negotiation and you can tell the other side, I want to emphasize that quality is very important. And that's a better word than demand because demand is kind of like take it or leave it. Demand is give it to me or game over. Emphasize is can you please give me as much as possible because this is something that we emphasize. Expensive meaning the price is high and you use this in your negotiation all the time. Your price is too expensive. We need a product that's not so expensive. We need shipping that is not so expensive. So expensive you can use all of the time. Now you don't want to say the opposite. You don't want to say cheap. Um, I think a lot of times we use cheap, but in English cheap can also mean low quality, not really good thing, not just low price. So rather than saying low price, you say expensive as the opposite, saying your product is too expensive. Your product is too much, too expensive. 
which means I want it to be cheaper. But you don't say I want it to be cheaper. You just say, no, nope, that's too expensive for me. That's a great word to use. Haggle is another way to say bargain. It's a um, synonym of bargain. So haggle or haggling means that there's two sides, two people or two companies. And, and you, usually when we use the word haggle, we do think of two people haggling. So usually at the market, when you go to the market, you go to the fresh market with your mom or your dad and you're buying fresh food at the, at the market and you can haggle with the person at the sales stall there and haggle usually over price, right? Although sometimes you can haggle over quant quantity or quality, but usually it's just over price. So that's haggling. You would not use this in your negotiation. This is something to talk about your negotiation. List price is just the standard price. And the, you can remember this by thinking of the price that's on the product or the price that's on the list of the product. So list price usually means the retail price. Now we can use this in our negotiation by coming out and saying, you must give us a price lower than list price. In other words, I don't want to pay list price if I'm going to buy from you. You're the seller, I'm the buyer. I want to buy from you. I need a price that's lower than the list price because I'm going to turn around and sell it, so I need to have a margin. So list price is something we can often use in our negotiation. Oppose, meaning to be against something, to work against that. And you can come out and use this word openly in your negotiation and just say, we oppose something. Now it's a pretty serious word. It's not a word that you want to use um, lightly. We oppose really sounds like we're against it. So you want to be careful, but you can use it in your negotiation. We oppose postponing this negotiation. So they say, well, let's wait until Monday. But you don't want to wait until Monday. So what do you say? You say, we, would, we oppose. We would like to oppose a postponement of this negotiation. We would like to finish today. So that's the kind of way to use oppose. It'd be really hard to use oppose about price or product, or quality or quantity, because it's it kind of ruins a negotiation, right? How can you oppose something in a negotiation because the other side makes these offers and you make a counter offer? But I guess you could. You could say something like, we oppose changing the price or we oppose the price going any higher. That's possible. It's pretty strong. Outcome. So outcome is what comes out of the negotiation. It's the final result. And we can use this in our negotiation by telling the other side. I want to have a positive outcome. We are working towards a positive outcome. We're working towards a good outcome. So this outcome means we're trying to do something good. We're trying to do something positive. It's, it's very positive. Even the word outcome, usually you think of it in a positive way. And the reason for that in negotiation is if the negotiation fails, it's not an outcome that's a failure. It's just no outcome. So an outcome infers or kind of means that we're going to have some kind of success in the negotiation. Something's going to come out of the negotiation. And that's a good thing. Quote. Quote is the price that you're going to be offering. And it's not the price of the product, it's a quote. So remember, the price can be you know, up or down or anything, basically. So we don't really say the price. Rather, it's a quote. So can you give me a quote? Can you quote me a lower price? Can, that would be a verb. Can you give me a higher, well, you would never ask for a higher quote, would you? Can you give me a lower quote? If you're a buyer, you'd always ask for a lower quote. So that's price, but a better way to say that inside your negotiation because it, it, inf it infers that it's flexible. Okay, relationship. Relationship, of course, between two parties, between the two sides, you have a relationship. And one thing we're learning in this class is relationship is just as important uh, as any other part of negotiation, maybe more important than things like price and shipping and quantity and quality. Relationship can be very important. So in your negotiation, you can use this word relationship very simply by telling the other side. We want to have a good relationship. We're working towards a relationship. We want to improve our relationship. Don't you want to improve the relationship? Or if you give us this price, I'm sure we can have a good relationship for the next 10 years. So relationship is a word you can often use. It's very positive. Strategy. 
Of course, strategy we've talked about inside the chapter is going to be this overall high-level plan you have. And it's something that doesn't have many specifics, but it does have your overall direction and your big goal that you want to have. So it's important to think what's your goal and then implement it through a strategy. So this is the plan. Now you never tell the other side your strategy. When you use this word, it's only inside your group, inside your company. When you form your strategy, you make your strategy. You would never tell the other side your strategy. And you would never really say this word at all in a negotiation. It sounds very odd. Even if you said it to the other side, for example, you might say, ah, oh, I know your strategy, you're trying to delay. Well, that sounds really weird and who cares? It's a, it's a word you'd only use to keep your secrets, to talk about your secrets and how you're going to do it. And tactic is the same thing. So strategy is the big picture, whereas tactics are the small picture. How do you do it? What's the behavior? How do you execute? So your strategy is your big goal, your tactics is each little behavior, how to implement it. And again, you would use this inside your group, talking about your plan, planning, how you're going to execute your actual negotiation. And withdraw, meaning to leave the negotiation, to pull out of the negotiation and give up on the negotiation. And you can always use this as a threat. Yeah, if you do not give us this lower price, we're going to withdraw from this negotiation. Or you can just go ahead and do it uh, and then just say, that's it, we withdraw and you leave the, you leave the negotiation. Okay, that's it for part three. Thank you.